Let's talk about arc fault detection. Now, as of 2017, the National Electric Code, Article 210.12a, required arc fault interrupters, AFCI's arc fault circuit interrupters, uh, for all brand circuits uh, supplying 120 volts at 15 and 20 amp outlets or devices, and it covered the whole house. So, um, new construction now, you need uh, arc fault receptacles or arc fault uh, circuit breakers throughout the whole house. Now, how do they detect a, this an arc? Uh, they use a uh, Rogorski coil. Now, it's a it's a toroid, and they they wind it around, and then they bring the the wire back. And the the line or the current carrying conductor goes through the center, and when there's a uh, an arc fault, uh, arcs produces a uh, high frequency, and this will pick up that high frequency, brings it over to an ADD converter, and then it compares it to uh, no known arcs. Uh, usually, it's around uh, one megahertz. Uh, they had a couple standards. There was a branch circuit type that uh, tripped at 75 amps of arcing from line to neutral, or uh, or ground. And hopefully, this is a combination type that they trip at 5 amps uh, F series arcing. So they protect against arcing lined in neutral or ground. And they protect against series arcing a loose or broken uh, line. So uh, if your switch leg is, is broken or, or loose, creating an arc, it, it'll detect that. Uh, overload protection, short circuit protection. Now, they do have limitations. Uh, they can't detect a, a glow fault. That's where you have a high resistance uh, connection and it's glowing red hot. It could cause a fire. It doesn't can't distinguish that from uh, from the load. Uh, same with if the, uh, if you have stranded wire and you know it's cut most way through and the uh, there's a few strands left and are glowing red hot. That could cause a fire. They can't detect that. It just thinks it's a normal load. Uh, this is an arc fault uh, receptacle. And uh, I'm going to give it a try. I'm not going to do it in here on my desk, so I'm going to take it outside where uh, if I create an arc, it won't hurt anything. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. Here we are back at the workbench. I've heard complaints about these things having uh, nuisance tripping. So I, I ran a uh, drill motor, universal drill motor with a commutator on it, and it worked just fine. I ran a 1500-watt uh, 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 space heater on it. It was fine. I even plugged my 120 volt arc welder into it and I could weld with it just fine, didn't trip it out. Now, if you go from uh, the hot to neutral, hot to ground, it's going to trip every time and it trips before the, the main breaker tripped. I had a, a, a 20 amp breaker ahead of this and this thing tripped first. Uh, also, if you, um, I, if you have a, like a 100 watt light bulb or say a 60 watt light bulb in here and uh, you take the switch leg and you try to make an arc with the switch leg, it's never going to trip because the uh, you know 60 watts at 120 uh, volts is only going to be about a half an amp. This thing needs uh, 5 amps to trip. So I plugged it in the, uh, a um, space heater into it, 1500 watt, and I took the switch leg and I arced that and uh, it does trip it. It's tripped right now. You need to um, sustain the arc for you know a second or two. And then it, it does trip out. So um, they're mandatory now. Reset that. They're mandatory. And I'm going to put this in my uh, workbench here, just a little added uh, safety. They don't uh, protect against, uh, you know, personal injury with it or electric shock just for fire. And you, you have a uh, ground fault interrupter for the uh, to protect you against the shock. So uh, I'm going to put this in with the... Uh, with a ground fault interrupter and uh, a little extra protection on the bench. Anyway, that's uh, arc fault detection. Uh, thank you.